Hello, I have Kathy Crocker with KCR's Immigrant Services Department, and Kathy is the coordinator for the Settlement and Employment Mentorship Programs with KCR. Welcome, Kathy. Hello, thank you, Steph, for inviting me. Hello to everyone. I'm happy to be here today. Did I get your, uh, I might not have got your title right, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I basically, I coordinate the two programs, the settlement and mentorship programs, volunteer programs. Perfect. Um, so tell me a little bit about the mentorship programs. Okay, well, there are, as you said, there are two programs. Uh, there's the settlement mentorship program and the uh, employment mentorship program. So what it is basically is matching newcomers so people that have just recently arrived or maybe people that have been here for some time but have been in their communities and have not uh really broken into the community don't know anyone so we basically mentoring is encouragement and friendship and support that is the the whole idea is that mentors will help people settle into their new into their into their new country and help them start their new life that's more the settlement program. So what we always say is when we're recruiting mentors for the settlement mentorship program is, do you want to be a friend? Do you want to be a friend? Do you want a friend? So our big focus on the settlement mentorship is friendship and also connecting people in with other people in the community. So often it's very difficult for people to, to meet other people and, and maybe it's a language issue. Maybe it's something, maybe it's uh, they, they don't, they're shy. They don't know how, how to, how to say hello or how to greet people. So all of those things is what a mentor can do to help people settle into the community. The employment mentorship program is, is slightly different. It's a bit shorter and that's more focused on finding, helping people find meaningful employment. So that's more, a little bit more directed. It still involves encouragement and support, but it's around finding that employment and that means helping people meet other people in their field. So it might be someone, if they're an engineer or if they're a nurse, we try and match people in fields that are compatible so they can use their, you know, help them meet other people in the community. So those are the, basically the two programs. Um, right. Did you want me to tell a little bit more about the time commitment stuff? Or? We'll get to that for sure, but okay. tell us a little bit about how um, the volunteers, I mean, it's a volunteer program, but how, what kind of impact do they make on on the program how do they impact the lives of uh, your participants yeah that, that's a great question because that is what it's all about um i i could not do this job i know that kcr we we rely heavily on volunteers but the mentorship programs are it's all volunteers and they have a huge impact so if it's a settlement mentorship they are a friendly face they are someone that will listen to listen to a newcomer come and make them feel welcome and also help them learn about the customs here because it's really hard sometimes to know how, how do you, some people kiss on both cheeks. Well, now we don't, <laughs> we don't shake hands anymore, but it's just it's sort of getting used to what are the customs here? Like how do people connect? How do, where do people go? So it's just showing them where things are in the community and it's, it has a huge impact. Helping people practice their English because often people, um, newcomers practice their English in a, in a class setting, but they don't ever really have a conversation. So the, the settlement mentor is there to listen and help and chat and talk on a one-to-one -one level in a normal situation over coffee or as, as the case is now over Zoom or, you know, whatever, WhatsApp or whatever the channel that they use. And it, it just has a huge impact. I've had so many volunteers benefiting, telling me how wonderful it is to meet other people from other countries. They learn as well. One of my mentors said, Kathy, I had no idea what it was like, like what the customs were like this what i take for granted is common knowledge uh, you know his mentee didn't know he had no idea what what how to how to even approach someone and say hello or how to approach a, a telephone conversation so it, it's a they have a huge impact they're, they're, mentees are so grateful and mentors learn so much about what they take for granted so it's a it's a mutually beneficial programs both of them great um so you did talk a little bit in the intro but maybe a little more detail what does a let's start with settlement mentors what do they do what does that look like um maybe from the time they meet uh or even from the time they start training with you yeah 
Well, I can explain a little bit the process so that people have an idea of what it means to sign up to be a volunteer. We have a, a volunteer application form that we ask everyone to fill out so that we can match better with the person that we're going to match them with, a newcomer or an immigrant, whoever, whoever the person might be. And so they fill out the application form. And from that point, then I will have a, a brief interview meeting just to get to know, so we get to know each other. And this is a really important part of the process because I, I then get to know what a mentor will be comfortable with. Like, are they comfortable with someone who has a very low level of English or would they prefer someone that speaks quite fluently? So it's, it's, a, it's a moment for me to match up people's hobbies and what they like doing and if it's cooking or hiking. So that, that's a moment where I can interview people and, and just have a chat and we get to know each other. Uh, after that, we ask people to give us references. So we do two reference checks, a minimum of two reference checks. So personal references or employer references. Um, then we, after that, then we ask for a criminal record check. We do the criminal record check just to make sure we're working with vulnerable populations. So we have to run that on all of our volunteers. Um, it's an easy process. It can be done online. And, uh, and then we, and then the moment comes to think about who's going to, who's going to click with who. So that's where I get my matchmaking hat on. And I, um, I think about who I'm matching with who and, you know, just on many different levels. And then we do a meeting. Now we do it online on Zoom, which is actually working really well. And we'll meet the three of us. And, uh, you know, I just facilitate the initial meeting. And then it's up to mentors and mentees to, to get together and uh, organize their time. And I'm always here for assistance. If anyone has any questions or wants to just, you know, touch base or, you know, something that isn't working, you can always check back with me. I'm always available by email or phone. Right. And I think I can tell you, so the settlement mentorship is a commitment of, tw of 24 hours, more or less over a six month period. It might, again, we're flexible. It maybe if you meet two hours a week, somebody is finished in three months, they're fine. They, they feel okay. Or sometimes people form a friendship and carry on for longer than six months. The employment mentorship program is a shorter commitment. It's a commitment of uh, one to two months. It depends on what is accomplished over in that time and that's um yeah so that's meeting again once a week just to touch base and there's more you know reviewing resumes a bit maybe you're talking about interview skills and things like that so yeah the commitment is slightly different it's a bit longer for settlement mentorship and a bit shorter for the employment mentorship program good um and we talked about training uh, we talked a little bit about hours per week as well. Is there anything else you'd want to say about the, the time commitment? Do you, I mean, it's nice to match mentors once, but I'm sure you must match them more than once with other participants over time. Yes, that's a good, that's a very good point because I, over the last months, as we all know, it's been a tough time. Everyone's been at home. And so some mentors have had a lot of free time and they've taken on two or three mentees. And I have a great young guy from the Royal Bank and he's a, a financial advisor and he's been helping three or four people all at once. He's just connected up. You know, he has a, a fixed mentee and then he's taken on a bunch of other mentees that met him at a mentorship event. We had networking event and he's been able to really help a lot of people and people and newcomers are so grateful. Our participants are so grateful for the help because they feel, I, I often hear the words, Oh, we feel so encouraged and we feel like there's hope. And I just want to say to everyone that's, that's listening that this is what the main role of a mentor is to provide hope and encouragement because it's really hard starting a new life somewhere else. And, and it's been really, it's particularly tough in the last, over the past, you know, four or five months. So mentors, our mentors have done an amazing job. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. And I, I think Stephanie, I didn't talk about the training. We also do have a training session. It's just a two hour training session. And we, we talk a lot about pe people have an opportunity to ask questions. What are their fears about mentoring? What, what do they think they're not going to be good at? Or, and it's a learning process. So that's why I always say I'm always here to talk about um, any questions or problems or concerns that come up. And I try to invite uh, other mentors pre that have had success stories in the past and, and just to share their experiences of what it is to be, to be a mentor. And, and to help give that encouragement and support. Absolutely, best to learn from yeah. others' experiences for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Steps. If someone was interested in, in becoming a mentor, what? how do they get in touch with you and 
get started. Yeah, so I mean, I mentioned earlier the steps. I'll just go over them one more time so that you can contact me at my email. Um, I don't know if that's up here. Um, I, can I, can put put it up on the, I can put it yeah. up in the video. Okay, great. Okay, so my email, just send, shoot me an email and I can send you a volunteer application. Again, you just fill that out. And all of this process is so that we get to know you and we can match you with someone who will be a good fit. So it's an interview, short interview, then um, a criminal record check that easily can be done online, and that comes back to me, and that's stored. All the information is stored confidentially. We ask that you sign, that volunteers sign an oath of confidentiality, and we ask that you don't talk a lot about your mentees to other people. It's a small community, so, you know, things are told in confidence. People feel comfortable. They feel confident in being able to tell you tell their mentor things. So we just asked everyone to sign an oath of confidentiality and we go over how important that is. Um, and then we have a two hour training session where we invite guest speakers and we talk about what it is to be a mentor and answer any questions. And then there's a few other, there's an inf volunteer information release. We have a few little, there's a bit of paperwork to do, but it's not really that, it's not really that onerous. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty doable. So yeah, we try to make it as, as easy as possible, but it does take a bit, a bit of time. Um, thank you for mentioning, mentioning the confidentiality. That's really important. Yeah. And it is important in a lot of um, volunteer opportunities, but I don't think anyone's mentioned it yet. So it's a, it's a great point uh, yeah. to bring that up, that we need to be mindful of confidentiality yeah. in many yeah. of our volunteer roles, for sure. Yeah, yeah because it's, it's a small community, again, as I said. You know, we all know each other. We tend to move in. So it's just we try to just really remind that of um, you know of uh, just keeping things confidential because it's so easy to talk about people but you can talk maybe you can mention oh I know someone and if it's not anything specific if it's an interesting story or something you've really learned and you want to share it's okay if it's just anonymous but yeah we really encourage confidentiality great is there anything else you want an interested volunteer to know um, I think I think I, I would like to say to everyone that it, it really is a rewarding, enriching experience to be a mentor. And I think the word mentor, like, I think the question is, what does that mean? Is what we were talking about, like, what is a mentor? And often people ask me that. And I, I just think, again, it's someone who also, as well as encouragement, support, helping connect you with other people in the community, um, getting to know, it, showing, get, helping people get to know that are new to the community, where to go for things. But it's also, there's also a, a factor of modeling, showing people learn from watching you. When you go to a new country, you learn by hearing stories. So if you're sharing the stories about, people will ask you, mentors, mentees will ask you questions like, well, how do you do this here in Canada? Like, what is the protocol? Like, how do we do things? And it's just talking about those things and modeling what, what it is to be able to fit into the community and to be able to feel part of the community. And I also really want to stress, there's one other thing. Often mentors sign up and they think, well, we want to help a certain type of mentee. Like we, someone that's been here for five years, but you know, I have mentees that have been here for three years or four years and they've only been in their community. So their language is limited to them. So for example, someone who's lived here and they've been in their community and they only speak their language. So it's like they don't have never integrated into the community. They, they're shy. They don't feel confident speaking. So I just want to say, don't let it scare you up that someone's lived here for three years or make an assumption that they know everything. Because people live in a community for many years in a country and they really don't speak the language very well and they haven't integrated. So all the work that you're doing, whether someone's been here for a month or two months or, or a year, is, is really, really valuable. And I should, one more thing, a month, no, we usually wait and see where people are before we do any matching. We make sure they're settled and their needs are met that they have housing, they have their children in school, if that's what they need. We try and meet all those basic needs. And then from there, then we start, then someone feels comfortable to, okay, now I'd like to meet someone from the community. Right. So, yeah. Good. Thanks so much for your time today, Kathy. And uh, thank you. we'll hopefully see you in person again. <laughs> yes, please. I need mentors always. So please contact me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Steph. I, I appreciate you having me on your, on the, on the program. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.